I think they're discussing. Okay, what do we think of this place so far? Maybe it's better than living in an attic. Our friend Becky Key is a local realtor. And she asked us to get the bees out of the attic in a house that she's selling for one of our neighbors. It turned out to be a rather large attic and of course the bees were holed up in the farthest point in the most inaccessible place in the attic. But we thought that we could help Becky out and Jerry went in to vacuum them up. He's got it on a very low pressure to try to avoid disturbing them, but I do see them flying around there under the light. And his low backside is a little bit exposed there with just a t-shirt, but they're not light up yet. They are kind of getting on. they're going to get down his jeans. They did sting him through the t-shirt. Those bees had no appreciation for the sacrifice he was making to rescue them from the exterminator. He's kind of a hero when you think about it. Going back there to save these bees. Risking, uh-oh. Okay, I'll get you another one. That one was one of the food grade ones, so I want you to dive back in and get it. No, I'll bring you another one, honey. We started this at dark 30, mm -hmm. so all the bees would still be in the attic. And So their patterns are, they leave during the day and go out? The foragers, the foragers go out during the day uh -huh. and get pollen and nectar and bring it back okay. to prepare stores for the hive uh -huh. and the nurse bees, the queen, all the brood, of course, which is the baby bees being prepared, all that stays here in that comb. And of course they store honey and pollen in the comb. So we will give them back their honey and pollen. We'll probably take a little bit of honey for the homeowners uh -huh. if we can, we'll uh -huh. see how that works. Uh -huh. But we'll put, the, put those back into their new home, which will be a hive down near the river. So they'll have a water source and they'll have their own comb. <clears throat> so they hopefully will stay there, especially if Jerry got the queen. In the best scenario, if they don't have the queen there, there will be comb there that has young brood and they'll make a new queen. Or we can get another queen from Beeville which Did is where we just got a by election. <laughs> no, I think it's by proclamation. The queen that hatches uh -huh. first kills everybody else, kills all the other queen candidates. So, she, so they can't choose anybody but her. Huh. It's not very democratic. <laughs> no, it doesn't sound like it. No. Democratic. You okay? Yeah. I think I dropped the hive rule. Oh, well, we've got more hive tools, darling. Is it any problem for the homeowners to have an extra bucket in there? I mean, if it ever leaks, it'll just catch it. And, yeah, they're a little bit angry now. But despite angry bees and smoky attics, the intrepid realtor is staying the course, and she continued to help out. She carried the bucket full of vacuumed bees down from the attic to put in the back of our truck where it could stay ventilated. She carried the tote, bat, tote box full of comb and bees, a few bees that had escaped the vacuum because they were so tightly attached to their comb. Also took those down the stairs and put them in our truck. And our next task is to take the bees to a new home near the river. It's about seven miles away and we wanted to get them installed very quickly because we wanted to make sure that none of them got too hot or didn't get ventilated adequately. 
So we went straight to the new location and began to set up the new hive. All right. It's a hazy, hazy morning. We just got back from the house. And we're going to set this hive up away from our regular bee yard in case there are some diseases. And uh, remove the seats. if you want to, yes, I think that's a good idea. And we're going to put it on this thrift store toilet stand. It's very, it's, we decided it was sturdier than the little decorative stand. <laughs> and in the red tub is all the comb. It's the brood comb and the honey. Jerry said there was very little honey. It's so early that they may be raising brood and the, may be using all their honey. And these are the bees. We had that fan going for a while, but it didn't seem necessary now that we're in this little breeze and we do have ventilation for them. We're working to get them into their new home as quickly as we can. A few of these frames have foundation and they're uh, previously used so you can see some of these bees are, who are loose are interested in that. We're going to put sugar water in here. And most of the frames are open so that we can use rubber bands to put the bees' existing comb into these frames so that we hope that'll encourage them to stay here in their new home and give them less work getting housekeeping set up. Just what we plan to do is shake them into that after we get the comb ready to go and uh, shake into this empty top box. Right. That looks perfect to me. Bee. Yeah, there are quite a few little bees hanging around. And they oh, seem to... We, they, the frames, we do have to put the comb in the frames. Okay, so... On the bed of the truck. Yeah, I like doing it close so that the oh, bees yeah. that are on the comb will stay here and they'll hopefully smell the queen there so they'll hang around. Oh, that's brood. That's good. I think these bees were having a hard time. There's a spotty brood pattern, though they do have some drone cells around the outside. They had zero honey, but some cells with open nectar that will try to make sure the bees get to use. Any of this on top or anywhere? Not right now. I want to just leave it open so they can leave fly open. out and get in there. Yeah. So I'm ready to do the bees? Yes, ready to do the bees. I'm drawing them away, honey. I'm drawing them away. They're already settling down, anyhow. Mostly. I don't blame them for being mad. Is that you okay with that piece of meat? I am certainly okay. That has a little bit of honey on it, a little nectar, anyhow, so. I do too. Let's go have breakfast and we'll come back and see what happens. After breakfast, we found a very peaceful scene. Most of the bees were in the hive. We, were, we saw they were forming a cluster over one of the brood frames that we had just put in and we assumed that that's where the queen was, but we decided not to disturb them further. There were also bees wandering around on the broken comb that we had left out on the robbing station. They were kind of checking each other's credentials, making sure that they were valid sisters of the hive. And we decided that before we buttoned them all up and left them alone for a few days, that we should do two more projects. The first project was to move the hive 
on top of some sheet metal. I'll, I'll explain the reasoning for that in just a minute. And the second project was to take some additional brood comb that we had found and put it into another open frame so that they could keep as much of their brood as possible. But the metal underneath the hive stops the life cycle of the hive beetle. They have to go through the larval stage in the ground, so putting the metal prevents them from doing that. So if some hive beetles should fly by and decide to stop, they won't be able to reproduce. And here we've got them defending their robbing station from some other interlopers. I hope it won't be a fight to the death. No, it was not a fight to the death. We just pick it up and move it over. Yeah. I'll just help you pick it up and move it over. We're giving them back their brood frames, their brood comb, and they are busily tending it too. wondering whether putting all of these smaller pieces of comb into a frame and holding them in place with rubber bands is going to work. And you'd be right to wonder that. We have found that sometimes it does. Sometimes the bees are able to incorporate it into the frame. They attach it to the sides and to the, to the top and bottom. Sometimes it doesn't. It helps to give them a starter strip at the top. but. At least we tried, and we'll see how this goes. Well, I came just about, not quite sundown, to pick up the comb and clean up the robbing stations so the raccoons won't be all in it tonight. And I know you can't really see that, but the idea is morning sun, afternoon shade, and I can see that they have been in the shade through most of the heat of the day, and when that little oak tree finishes leafing out, it ought to be a nice spot for these bees. There are still just a few little bits of light as these bees fly home for the evening. But it seems like a pretty contented scene from here.